Hey, Walter Sorrells back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today we're going to take a dive into the mailbag. So I get a couple of questions every day from viewers. A lot of times we're sort of repeating things or going over pretty elementary uh, questions. But uh, every now and then I get some that are pretty fresh or new. So when I get a little stack of those kind of questions, I like to do a Friday Five where I just answer questions. So today I'm going to take kind of a clump of questions specifically about uh, heat treating. Heat treating is absolutely one of the most important foundational skills uh, of any knife maker. When people get started making knives, a lot of times, you know, they've carried knives, they're knife enthusiasts, and they have a good idea about what kinds of designs they like and how they like things to look and so forth. But metallurgy is really uh, one of those things that, you know, everybody kind of starts from square one. So the first question here is one that uh, a lot of folks who've been doing knife making for a while will find pretty elementary, but I think, you know, if you're just getting started, just scratching the surface of, of this hobby, it's really uh, an important thing for you to get your hands around. And that question is, should you water quench a steel or should you oil quench it in order to harden it? Anytime you make a knife, it has to be hardened in order for you to get the full value out of that, um, out of that steel. When you buy steel from a, a mill, it's in a fairly soft condition. And one of the really interesting things about steel, just generally, and what makes it so suitable for knives, is that you can heat treat it, which is heating it up to a certain temperature and then cooling it down uh, fairly rapidly, which causes uh, changes in the structure of the, um, of the steel and makes it harder. And you can kind of play a lot of little games with how hard it is, how tough it is, um, and so forth to, to get the optimal um, characteristics for your knife. Now, some steels are what are classified as water hardenable steels, and some are what are classified as oil hardenable steels. Um, so the first thing that you need to understand is that all steels are different. There are a lot of different kinds of steels. The steel that you go down to a big box store and uh, buy as, as welding steel is not suitable for making knives. You have to use specialized steels that are you know, useful for knife making. Um, so you know, we can basically break those down into three kind of rough categories. Um, First are stainless steels, and they have to be heat treated in, in a fairly specialized way. And when you first get started, um, you're probably not going to be heat treating stainless steel, um, period. And those are, those are generally what's, what's classified as air hardening steels. So what I'm going to talk about here are varieties of carbon steel. Some, you know, some are classified as tool steels, but um, basically they're steels that can be uh, hardened by immersing them in some kind of fluid medium, either water or oil. So the basic issue is how quickly does a steel need to be cooled down in order to convert from uh, what's known as austenite, which is the, the condition that it's in sort of around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, um, in order to harden it when you cool it down to you know more or less room temperature. If you have to do that really, really fast, then you need something like water. If you can go a little bit slower, oil is a suitable medium for cooling that steel. Now, I'm not going to get into all the details of this, but basically, if, you, if you're you know, going to be using a particular kind of steel, you can look up the standard heat treating regimen um, online. They're, they're um, heat treating specifications. Um, data sheets that you can find on just about every commonly used steel. And they'll explain that there's a water hardening steel, an oil hardening steel, whatever it is, and they'll explain the basic regimen that you need to um, go through in order to harden that steel. So with standard high carbon steels that would typically be used by uh, knife smiths, um, you're going to have steels that are known as 
water hardening steels and those are typically um, 1050, uh, 1070, uh, 1080, 1095 is kind of on the um, the uh, you know dividing line between oil and water hardening steels and W1 and W2. Um, so those are the ones that are typically going to be water hardening. Oil hardening uh, there are a wide, wide variety of steels that kind of fit into that category. Those would include, um, you know, potentially, depending on how you handle it, um, 1095, uh, but also um, uh, 5160, 52100, um, and uh, there are quite a wide range of other steels, but those are three of the most commonly used ones. So here's basically the way this works. Water cools down the steel faster than oil. Oil cools it down faster than holding it in still air, which is a way of hardening, uh, you know, certain kinds of steels. Why would you use one as opposed to the other? You know, if you could water harden everything, why wouldn't you just do that with everything? Well, the reason is that water hardening is a very violent, aggressive um, way of heating or of uh, cooling down steel. So when you do that, it's not at all uncommon to cause things to warp and even to crack. And, you know, warping's bad enough, but cracking, that's terrible. So, uh, as a general rule, if something's an oil-hardening steel, by all means, harden it by oil. And if it's a water-hardening steel, then you sort of have to harden it with water. So, you might ask, well, why would people use water-hardening steels if uh, there are other alternatives? So basically, there are some special characteristics of some of those water-hardening steels. You can produce hormones in water-hardening steels in a way that is very difficult to do in oil-hardening steels. Um, and uh, sometimes it's just because that's what you've got. You know, if you've used uh, a truck spring uh, that you've gotten out of Uncle Donnie's uh, garage or something, uh, then, you know, that, that may be something that's going to best harden uh, in water. So one last little note is if you, if you aren't even sure whether something will harden in oil or water, take a little piece of it, heat it up until it's you know, roughly cherry red, uh, quench it in oil and see if it hardens. If it does not harden, then you're going to want to water harden it. So try again, same little piece, heat it up to cherry red, uh, quench it in oil, in water, and uh, you know, if that thing gets nice and hard, then you know, hey, I've got a water hardening steel, that's how I need to uh, heat treat it. Now. Uh, you could heat that steel and it still doesn't harden. Good to know, that means that you've got something that's not suitable for knives at all. So if I were to sum it up, I would just say, hey, Google's your friend, go out there and look for data sheets on whatever steel that you're using. Uh, find out if it's an oil hardening steel, water hardening steel, whatever, and uh, that gives you a starting point that you can uh, use to start triangulating on what the best way to heat treat a steel is. Next question, uh, recently somebody contacted me and uh, wanted to know why you would quench uh, vertically as opposed to horizontally. Um, so vertically, uh, what we mean is, you know, typically we have a big old tube of some kind of fluid oil or whatever, and you're taking the uh, knife and you're going into it in this direction. Whereas sometimes you'll see like, uh, uh, Japanese smiths, for instance, have a big long trough and they'll take the blade and go into it this way. What's the rationale for doing one over the other? Well, basically, all things being equal, I would rather go vertically. The reason for that is that, um, you know, you're putting less stress on the blade, there's less likelihood of it wobbling, uh, and therefore less likelihood that it's going to not just warp, but actually bend as you're hoiling it around. If you just go vertically, gravity is helping you out and is keeping that, not, that uh, blade nice and straight, and that's going to minimize the chance that you're going to uh, have something that's bent. Now, here's the wrinkle. You know, I'm sure lots of people have all kinds of different opinions on this, but this is my basic philosophy on this. If I'm oil hardening, I'm al almost always going to go in uh, horizontally and the reason is that the entire quench is slower and so as I go in 1001 1002 you know this part is is being cooled for a slower period of time than this is if I go 1001 1002 1003 and I start pulling it out the tip let's say has been in there for you know 
maybe five seconds, and this part's been in for three seconds. Um, if we're going into water, that couple of seconds makes a big difference, and it's very typical when you're uh, quenching in water for the reasons I talked about before, cracking and, and, and uh, warping and so forth, that uh, you would go in only for a few seconds and take it back out, and that decreases the speed that it quenches uh, enough that you know at the lower temperatures it's less likely to cause it to crack. On the other hand, with oil, typically I'm going to just put it in there and leave it in there, and I'm not taking it out until it's almost completely hardened or all the way hardened. Um, on the other hand, with, with water hardening, I may put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. This is called an interrupted quench, and that's kind of a typical thing that people do when they're water hardening. So, uh, easier to keep a nice, even uh, quench if you go ver horizontally. Um, if you go vertically, you sort of have to go in there and hold it pretty well until the whole thing is hardened. Last question is, does it make more sense to uh, heat treat before or after you grind the uh, bevels for the knife? Or maybe put the opposite way, should you heat treat first, then grind the bevels later, or vice versa? Okay, so first off, there is not a hard and fast rule on this. You'll find guys who like to harden and then uh, grind, and you'll find people who prefer to uh, grind and then harden. A um, <clears throat> couple things to be aware of uh, when you do this. The first is that um, obviously the steel is going to be much harder after it has hardened. So alternatively, what's the rationale for grinding after you quench? Well, it's not uncommon for knives, particularly because they're all long and skinny and it's, it's hard to make them cool down in a really, really even way. There may be residual stresses, you might bump them, there are just a variety of reasons why they may warp during the process of heat treating. So the theory on the other side is just let's quench this thing while it's nice and flat and in a simple piece of bar stock that's harder to cause to warp, then grind them after everything's heat treated and you'll assure yourself of keeping a nice straight blade with no warping. So obviously it's going to take more time to grind the steel when it's already been hardened, but uh, to, to my thinking, the most important fact is that once it's been heat treated, you can't overheat it or you'll cause the um, hardness to uh, get dialed back. In other words, you're over tempering the steel if you overheat it uh, after it's been heated. So, you know, everybody uh, who's used a grinder knows what it's like to grind something and suddenly uh, the, the steel starts to turn blue. What that means is that the steel has now gotten to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. If it gets that hot, you're losing the, uh, the temper that you've worked so hard to, to build into the steel, you know, the, the hardness that you've quenched it to and then tempered after that. Um, and so you have to be very, very careful when you grind after heat treatment. So for me, I prefer to grind, then heat treat, and then just do a last little superficial grind at the end. So all of those things combine so that, you know, personally, I prefer to grind then heat treat, uh, but uh, some people do it the other way and have great success with it. So it, it's really one of those things that's worth experimenting and finding a way that works for you. All right, hope you found some useful nuggets there. Uh, got another list of questions that I'll uh, tackle next week. Uh, so should have another Friday Five out for you next week whole new set of questions. These won't be about heat treating though. All right, see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!